This is section 4.1, and we're going to talk about locating extreme values, and that would be your max or your min using the derivative. You know, we've in college algebra, we do find the max and min with calculator. We can find it with a vertex formula. There's all sorts of ways that we could do that. And now in calculus, we can determine that using the derivative. Okay? And so let's, there's some formal definitions. So let's go down here. And let's do look at a couple of things. Um, giving you y equals x squared. But the domain is different on each of these four pictures. In this one, it's going on forever. So the domain is negative infinity to infinity. So it has no absolute max. It has an absolute min at x equals 0. Well, here we have something different. We have a point. Let's see. I think I've made it darker. But you've got a point here and a point here. So that is the domain, and it's closed from 0 to 2. So we have from 0 to 2, inclusive. And in that area, there's an absolute max here, and there's an absolute min here. At x equals 0, the absolute max will be 4. Okay. I'm sorry, at 0, it'll be 0. And at x equals 2, the absolute max is 4. At the min, it's 0, 0. All right, this picture is a little different because we have an open circle. An open circle means that's not included. It's a boundary, so that's the parentheses 0, 2 with a bracket. In that, we do have an absolute max at x equals 2, y equals 4. We don't have an absolute min because this is undefined. So when you have an open circle, you're not going to have uh, an extrema. This one has open circles on both ends of that, so we have parentheses there are no absolute extrema. So we, I wanted you to see those pictures and get that kind of in your head. All right, the extreme value theorem says if f is continuous on a closed interval, and so that would be with bracket a comma b, then f contains both an absolute max and an absolute min. Okay, so there are numbers in that interval. And so here's some possibilities where that would be the case. If you've got a closed interval from x2 to x1, well, you're going to have a max there. You're going to have a min there. Here, you're going to have a max and a min in the endpoints, etc. You can see this. Now, here, even a single point of discontinuity can keep a function from either having a max or a min. Okay. So if this is open circle here, then we're not going to have a highest point. Okay? When you get into the discontinuity, that's when that starts to fail. Because remember here in this, if it is continuous on a closed interval, so that's important for that theorem to, to hold. All right, first derivative theorem. If f has a local max or min value at an interior point of its domain, and if f prime is defined, then f prime of c equals 0. All right? So what that tells us, if we are going to find absolute extrema, here's the process. Find all the critical points. And by that, we mean find the derivative, set it equal to 0, and solve. Evaluate the function at all critical points and the endpoints. Choose the largest and smallest values. So here's an example. Find the absolute max or min for f of x equals x squared on the interval negative 2 to 1. So we take the derivative of that. That's 2x. Set it equal to 0, and you get x equals 0. That's your critical number. Then you evaluate both the endpoints and the interval in the inner sorry the endpoints and the critical number so when we do that we do f of negative 2 f of 1 f of 0 you get 410 well here's the max here's the min if you look at it on the calculator you would have this picture and from negative 2 to 0 what do we have we have a max at 4 and a min at 0 so that's how we're going to work those problems all right, let's look at the problems. 
Determine from the graph whether the function has any absolute extreme values, and then explain how your answer is consistent with the, interme the extreme value theorem. All right, so do we have extreme values? We do. We have something at C2. We have a, a high point here. Maybe I need to be in red. So we have a high point there, and we have a min right here. So we have a max, we have a min. Okay, now the second part of the question, so that was A. Explain the results in terms of the extreme value theorem. Since the function is continuous on a closed interval, it's going to have both an absolute max and an absolute min in its domain. And that is the one choice that says that. Okay. Number two, same question. All right. This doesn't have an extreme value on its domain. If its domain is from A to B, with A not being included and B not being included, there are no extreme values. Okay, so that would be D. Since the function is not continuous and the domain is not a closed interval, F may or may not attain any absolute extreme values. So that would be that choice. Find the absolute max and mins for this function on this interval. All right, so here's our function. Take the derivative of that, it's negative 2x. Set that equal to zero. We get x is zero is a critical number. Then we evaluate f prime of all of these numbers. We get zero, negative three, and one. This is our min, this is our max. You plug them into your box, okay? So set the derivative equal to zero and then evaluate critical numbers and endpoints. All right, same thing here, f of theta is cosine theta, so f prime is negative sine theta. If you set that equal to zero, you get zero. So then we are going to, sorry, okay, sorry. Um, so then you're going to evaluate the endpoints, which were negative pi and pi over 4, and 0. So when you do that, you have f of those. So you're just saying what's cosine of negative pi, what's cosine of pi over 4, etc. You get values, and you have a min and a max. Those would go there. And I just realized that I wrote something wrong, and I said it wrong. Up here, um, we're not doing f prime of those numbers. I evaluated it right, but I wrote the wrong thing, and I think I said it. So it's f of those numbers to get the y values. All right. Let's look at x to the 8 thirds, same thing. x to the 8 thirds, well the derivative is 8 thirds x to the 5 thirds. When you set that equal to zero, you get zero as a critical number. We seem to be getting a lot of those. And then you're going to evaluate the endpoints and zero, and you get a max of 256 and a min of zero. This question just asks you to determine all the critical points. And so f of x is this. f prime of x would be 2x minus 2. Set that equal to 0 and you get x is 1. That would be your critical number. Find the extreme values of the function and where they occur. All right. So we have y equals 4x squared plus 5x plus 1. y prime is 8x plus 5. Set that equal to zero, and we have x equals negative 5 eighths, which is our critical number. Then when you plug negative 5 eighths into the original, we get negative 9 sixteenths. So the answer would be the extreme value of negative 5 eighths at negative 6 9 sixteenths. Right. Um, let's see, what do we have? We have a quotient, 2x over x squared plus 1. So the derivative, that would be not y1, but y prime, is the bottom times the derivative of the top. 
minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. So when we clean that all up, we have 2 minus 2x two squared over that. When you set that equal to 0, you're, you can multiply that over there. You, it's gone. 2 minus 2x two squared, factor out 2, and then this factors to 1 minus x, 1 plus x, so x is either 1 or negative 1. Evaluate the original function for both of those. You have a max and a min. Okay, and let's see. Um, the max would be 1, and you do um, need to find out the other values, and I think I, I just figured those right here. So you can, you can do that. You can do that plugging in. All right, extreme values of this one. 8e to the 7x plus 8e to the negative 7x. So here's our original. The derivative of this is 8e to the 7x times the derivative of the argument, so there's a times 7, plus 8e to the negative 7x times negative 7. So this becomes 56e to the 7x minus 56e to the negative 7x. So if you write that this way, where this negative exponent, this e to the negative 7x goes on the bottom. Okay, so what, ha what I did here, um, I needed this to be one fraction, and so I need the denominator for this one to be e to the 7x, so I'm going to multiply that by e to the 7x, which makes it 56e to the 14x minus 56 over e to the 7x. So now, that's your derivative, that's your y prime. Set that equal to 0. This part's going to go away when you multiply it over there. Um, so now we have 56, e to the 14x minus 56. I factored out the 56, e to the 14x minus 1, and that equals 0. 56 goes away when you divide it. You have e to the 14x equals 1. To solve that, you have to take the ln of both sides, natural log, ln of e to the 14x equals ln 1. ln of e to the anything is just the anything, so we now have 14x equals, and if you evaluate ln 1, it's 0. So ultimately your critical number is 0. Then f of 0, plug it in, and you get 16. So back up here, the extreme values, 0, 16. It says type an ordered pair, which we did. All right, number 10. All right, the function, and it gives you a v of x equals, and it models the volume of a box. Find the extreme values, interpret those values in terms of the volume of the box. All right, so we're going to work down here. Here's our original, and I went ahead and I multiplied these out and then I multiplied by x, so I ultimately got a cubic equation. Then I took the derivative of that. So v prime is equal to 160 minus 104x plus 12x squared. Set that equal to 0. That one factors. Um, I did the divide by 4 to make it easier. Um, you could also throw that in the calculator and get the x-intercepts, but that one did factor you get 6 and 2 thirds and 2, but up here we had an interval. We had that the x has to fall between 0 and 5, so the 6 and 2 thirds is not in the interval. We're going to use 2, f of 2, plug that in, and we get 144. So our answer right here, the extreme value, um, value found represents the largest volume in the box occurs when x is 2 and da, 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 occur when x okay so this is a multiple choice that's a little confusing but choice a is the one that works the value found in the previous step represents the largest volume in the box and occurs when x is 2 okay so I think that does it for 4.1, and that should be enough to get you going.